Well, they say the only two certainties in life are death and taxes, and unfortunately the timing of death is often anything but certain. And this leads to two risks fundamental to human existence. One is mortality risk, that you die too soon and leave behind financial dependence. And the second is longevity risk, which is that you survive so long that you run out of money. Now this second risk, longevity risk, is really fundamental to a, uh, a happy and secure retirement when people have stopped working. So longevity risk coverage aims to address this. It aims to help people live a secure and happy retirement. So it varies hugely across the globe, and there are a couple of factors behind why it varies. First is sociological difference. How likely people are to rely on family units for their retirement needs? Are people going to live with their children in retirement? Second is the level of state provision. So some developed economies pay very generous pensions from the state, which means that the need for the insurance sector to step in is less. And the third is historic differences. Retirement saving doesn't happen overnight, it's accumulated over many years. So where we look at retirement saving, we look at markets that have already got an established practice of putting money aside for retirement. So longevity coverage has grown hugely over the last couple of years. And there are a couple of reasons behind this. Firstly, companies have long provided pension schemes for their employees. But those pension schemes have become very expensive and very risky to manage and they're increasingly looking to the insurance sector to help them manage them better. Longevity coverage is absolutely key to this. Secondly, individuals are increasingly finding that in order to have a happy, stable retirement, they need some control over how much money they can spend. And the only way they can do that is by having some level of longevity protection.